just wanted to explain my experimental uh, aquaponics system uh, using an existing koi fish pond. Fish are extremely happy in the pond, growing quite nicely. The only reason I put all these plants in is to soak up any excess ammonia in the water from the fish waste. Now as the fish grow, and I've put in a few extras as well, now it's starting to be unbalanced. So um, once I put plants in the grow bed over here, that should soak up any extra nutrients um, from the fish waste. The fish can grow happily and I can grow some veggies at the same time. And the system works beautifully with koi carp, but I'm experimenting here because I've set up many different development projects um, in New Guinea and, and in the third world and what I'd like to do uh, once I thoroughly test this system is, is go back to New Guinea and, and set something up similar over there and I wouldn't be using koi carp in that instance I'd be using some sort of perch or tilapia or some other uh, fast growing fish because the idea behind the system is you would grow your own veggies and grow your own fish from all the uh, fish uh, waste the waste goes into the biological filter, the filter then uh, converts it into uh, the ammonium into plant nutrients, plant food that gets um, circulated around my courtyard here in Australia uh, into two different um, kids pools which are my, uh, my beds for, for the vegetables. The veggies get the nutrients, circulates back into some other tubs and then hey presto back into the pond and the whole cycle goes around again so basically it's a nitrogen cycle um, and it can really sustain many families and communities if it was set up in the third world or set up in the western world which is uh, what I'm doing to start with now oxygen is very important in this system of course uh, you want to oxygenate your water in any way possible I've used the lion here um, which is a great little guy um, just needs a bit of algae to grow in it and it'll look really good uh, to oxygenate the water coming into the pond I've also got the outlet from the aquaponics up at the back of the pond that's also um, trickling in oxygen and if I can just take you to the waterfall I've built a waterfall coming out of the biological filter uh, I've tried to make it as natural as possible again just needs a bit more algae growing on it and look fantastic three tiers of oxygen basically going into the pond and then from, if I spin you around, the growing beds over here, of course, it's being oxygenated from the top level, coming down underneath, uh, if I can show you, a bit of a trickle oxygen there. And to help you set up a similar system, I'll show you how I tested the system before I put gravel in. The siphon's just kicked into play. And you can see a really great flow rate here. So at the moment, nothing's overflowed. It's trial and error. It certainly overflowed the other day. Um, but at the moment, nothing's overflowed. That one's fine. I've got about two centimeters before it hits the top of the rim. And I've still got water siphoning out of there. I might have to reduce the size of this standpipe. And I should just show you as well. I'll break the siphon here. And I'll just show you, this is basically what I've done, PVC tube, I've just cut some teeth in the bottom and I put a bit of a, well I put a, a small 3mm PVC um, tubing on it to, to create a, a siphon effect. And I've just got a um, gasket fitting, so it's watertight, and that belt siphon just goes over the top, it won't work now because I've broken it, but it's important to empty the entire contents of the water um, for, the, for the plant's health working a treat time for gravel now it has been a bit of trial and error I must say um, now that I've added the gravel I've got a few plants there too but um, now I've added the gravel the slightly it was overflowing it was just flooding the like what it is down here um, I actually need to add a, either a little bit more gravel or cut the standpipe probably two centimeters which is what I did for the top one I just um, cut that pipe two centimeters lower and it all seems to work beautifully at the top 
But now it overflows down here and doesn't quite go to plan because I really don't want the water sitting on top because if it's on top like that, all that's going to happen is a lot of algae is going to grow, I believe. So um, I might just try and add some more gravel into there or if I get lazy or, or I can cut the standpipe. I'm running out of gravel too because I'm pulling the gravel out of the bottom of the fish pond and certainly stirring it up but um, still probably a fair bit of gravel in there I can pull out so it should all work out well. Now in, in uh, the third world when I do set this up in New Guinea I, I would use local, um, local supplies so I wouldn't be using these kids pools I'd be using something maybe drums maybe drums and bathtubs um, whatever I could find in the local area but for this purposes, I found a couple of kids pools and I've also got some big black drums here, just, just as an experiment. The reason that I use these uh, two large um, plastic tubs is because I also want to breed some koi. I'll put koi probably in, this, in the bottom one and I might put some silver perch as well in the top one. And they should survive in there, maybe 20, 25. Uh, fish so that I can actually harvest those fish in there as well. The sides of the walls of these tubs have been uh, strapped together with ratchet ties and a bit of timber. Now that's really because these tubs are not really designed to hold this much water and they started to bow. I use science and also use agricultural methods but I'm also a bit of a bush mechanic as well. I've had a lot of practical experience out in the, in the bush so this is one way to, to make the system work effectively. Not ideal, but it works. I found it very important to control the flow rate of the water going into the grow beds. And the simplest way was to put in a, a ball valve, um, a 25 mil ball valve coming straight out of the, the filter. Pipe size uh, turned out to be very important as well. As you'll see in the second tier of the grow bed here, I've used the 32 mil pipe. Um, now, originally I had a black PVC uh, pipe connection just like the one in the top grow bed which is 25 mils now that comes straight out of the bio filter now that's fine for the for the top one because you need a slow rate of water flow however when it comes down to this second one uh, it just overflowed all the time so I had to change the pipe size and my final tip is um, this, this is the 32 mil outlet going into the second tier now in hindsight as of because I'm going to add fish into this, this, these black tubs, I really should have put a screen to stop the fish flowing up and into the tub. So my advice, put the screen in before you fill your beds with gravel because it's going to be very heavy for me to lift. <laughs> and also, around this side, on the outlet here, again, I should have put a screen to screen the fish out, otherwise the fish are going to end up back in the main pond. It's only two tiers, two grow beds, but I've heavily planted it and it really should uh, provide a lot, of, a lot of food for us. There sure is a lot of nutrients in the water, so the idea would be to, you know, maybe put five of these beds in to match my 2,000 litres of, um, of pond, but this is just a good starting point. You go guys, who wants to eat out of my hand? You do? Fantastic. All my fish are completely trained to eat out of my hand. How many fish will let you pat them as you feed them? How many fish? <laughs> yeah, guys. Who wants it?